guys, let me give you an introduction to this topic, which is other equations of state. The most common one, or the first to, in to actually make sense that the ideal gas is not that uh, realistic, or that ideal gases by definition do not exist because uh, they suppose that the ideal gas have no volume, which is not true at all. All the molecules have eventually a volume. They also supposed that the intermolecular forces were inexistent, so they simply didn't account for that. And real gases do have interaction between each other. And more importantly, I will say the inelastic collisions. Before they thought that they were elastic, that means they transferred completely the energy to the other molecule. And that is absolutely not true. Nothing is like that in real life. You always lose energy. So, this guy is cool. Van der Waals, Van der Waals, I don't know how to pronounce it. I think he's Dutch. Uh, he introduced his theory on gases. He actually thought on making a fix or, let's say, a... Um, modification on the ideal gas, which is PV equals RT. And essentially accounted for the attraction and repulsion of molecules in either volume or pressure. So he got this fix. He said, I'm going to make a fixed factor in pressure and a fixed factor in volume due to this interaction. I'm going to call this A for that pressure factor and B for that volume factor and you can see here actually you're probably wondering why is that complex but this here will be pressure this here will be volume equals RT as you can see it's very similar to that of the ideal gas just this little correction and this little guy correcting pressure now uh, everything is the same but A and B. A modifies the attraction force between molecules due to pressure and, add, and B is the adjustment to the repulsive effect on molecules due to the volume. And yeah, well, I'll just let me explain you a little bit. These are critical temperatures, critical pressures, and this is the ideal gas constant, R. Just be sure that this is to the second power and this is to the first power and not, never forget this number, 27 divided by 64. Once you calculate the number, which will be a constant value, you may plug it in, plug this number in, and look for the value you are looking for. Actually, I made a uh, dimension analysis, so let's do it. For A, you got air, uh, the ideal gas constant to the square power and the temperature to the square power divided by pressure, which is to the first power. So these are the units on the ideal gas squared. The unit of temperature is only Kelvin squared and that of pressure to the first power. So as you can see, this is second power, second power, second power, and two times three will give you sixth power. So this guy goes out, this guy goes out, kilopascal goes with one kilopascal, and you are left with kilopascals times this. But as you can see, I could factor this, so I'm going to condense this to the second power and you will have cubic meters per kilomole. What does that sound to you? Volume and moles? Well, you probably know it, it's a specific volume. So, I'm going to do that actually. Uh, the units of the equation, let me go back. The units of this equation, as you can see, if you wanted to work with, you will have pressure units plus this here guy must have pressure units so let me go back we were using kilopascals so the total amount must be kilopascals and yeah you will see that I got the value of A which is here let me plug it in and I got B square which is here so when I square this guy cubic meters to the square power and cubic meters to the square power will go kilomole to the square and kilomole to the square will go and I will leave alone my kilopascal which makes a lot of sense because we get the dimension analysis right. 
letter b is way or value b is way easier we have only first power first power and first power we re substitute we have everything here temperature is k for kelvin and kilopascals once again this one goes out 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 and i get cubic meter per kilomole which probably you know is a specific volume here uh, which if i go back to the equation right here this guy here you can see cubic meters per kilomole and b must have that as well so you have this which is for b and this one b is also here even though they are subtracting the ending or the final values should be cubic meters per kilomole and yeah that was just to let you know wh what units were b and a a which is here which a is the probably difficult one here or here b is pretty easy actually the same units as a specific volume now if you wanted to include moles which i do not recommend i prefer working with specific volumes and then if i need to i search for my moles but if you want to add them directly to the equation you may do it of course you know this so if you have it down here you have this value to the square well this is the same as having this value or this total volume to the square and to the square that's why they have a square here a square here and they have it here as well and b they're taking out but if you do that you will need to take out the n here okay in order to have a dimension or the analysis correct mm, and yes of course if you want to check out the values of a and b be sure that you're also accounting for that change as well um, I think we're almost done with the van der Waals equation, at least with the theory. And as you can see from the equation, solving for pressure and temperature is relatively easy. Let's do it. But when you want to solve for volume, I think you will find out that this is a little bit complex, if not impossible to solve. So let's do it. Let's solve for pressure. We have this part of the equation, this part of the equation equals this part of the equation. So what I'm going to do is send this dividing, which is here, and this is adding, let me subtract it. So actually for pressure, this will be my equation, which is relatively easy. For temperature, well, this is a joke. You have this and you have this. So let me just send R dividing and you have your temperature. Pretty awesome. The problem well, before advancing, just let me show you this. This is, of course, depending on the critical temperature. What temperature are you using? And this is very important. Temperature. Depends on, of course, if you are using a gas, you will have this curve. If you're using a vapor, you will have this curve. Remember the difference of vapor. And if not, please go and check it out. Now... I was telling you about the volume. Volume is a little bit more interesting because you need to isolate these two volumes. So how do we do that? I have it here. This left side, the right side. First thing first, I will multiply this, this time this, and this time this, and this time this, and this time this. So I get PB. I get A this V cancels this V, so that I got A divided by B, and then I go pressure times B, I don't know why it's small, it should be long, and A, B, this times this, which is A, B divided by B to the square. And what I do here is just multiply by the square power of V, I got third power, first power, second power, no power, second power. So I want to get these two powers alone. I got one, I got this factor, and this factor right here. So as you can see, I got a difference, uh, sorry, I got a equation with three variables, a cubic equation, which is here, 
three, two, one, zero. You can solve this. Actually, I think there's a lot of uh, equations to solve this. I will personally do it on my calculator. Just plug in the data and click solve. But there's a very important thing to tell you here, guys, is about uh, since it's cubic, that means that you will get three solutions. Best case scenario, you get one positive solution and two negative solutions. So all negative solutions, you know that you may not have negative volumes, so take them away. Now, when you got three or two positive solutions, what will you choose if you don't know anything? You cannot choose anything, actually. You will have to calculate with the ideal gas value and choose the most, uh, let's say, logic value or, or near value. So you have, I don't know, you calculate it with the ideal gas, five cubic meters per mole. And you have 1,000, you have 7.5, and you have minus 5. Well, of course, negative will not work. And 1,000 seems a lot, so I'm going to take it a lot uh, away. So 5, 7.5 makes sense. And I will choose this value here. And before advancing, let me go and check out these in the other video. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues, or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.